place that we're going to track now and I would uh, pre appreciate if you listen to it and give us your views. E-Clerks is the company we're talking to, posted a good set of earnings. The constant currency revenue growth was strong at 4.6% sequentially and nearly 22% versus last year. The margins of the company have also expanded and it's a decent run. In the last one month, the stock is up 10%. Uh, E-Clerks also upped its guidance uh, uh, going forward. We have Nadadhur Srinivasan, who is the CFO of the company, who joins in now. Mr. Srinivasan, good morning. It's been a stellar 20% plus growth that you've seen in the first half of the year. Um, just trying to understand whether the second half will be slower, given the furloughs that are typical in Q3. And there's also perhaps some slower decision-making because of the challenging macro environment. Do you think it would be tough to maintain this 20% growth? Uh, good morning, Sonia, and uh, thank you for having me on the call. Sure. Uh, so we are an IT ES company, so furloughs um, don't matter as much to us. But having said that, the second part of your um, question does make a lot of sense. So we do see uh, macro uncertainties, and um, it's kind of going to be difficult to maintain uh, this level of growth uh, for the next, uh, you know, consistently for the next uh, three to four quarters. Hi, Mr. Srinivasan. Good morning. Uh, you know, if uh, we, if there are macro uncertainties and you'll have to tone down this sort of uh, pace that you're growing at, then what should be the realistic number if you could give us a broad range? And also, I wanted to quiz you about your margin guidance. As per going by what y'all are saying, you'll update by close to 200 basis points. How much of that is currency related? Uh, so, um, our margin guidance for EBITDA has always been in the 28 to 32 percent uh, range. And in Q1, we came at the lower end of the range, and that's typically because uh, uh, of the increments which happen in uh, April. And in Q2, we have uh, come to the midpoint of the range. And I think uh, even in Q3 and Q4, we believe that we this range for the full year should be uh, possible. Um, there's a little bit of um, uh, depreciation effect in that, because we get um, in Q1 about 15 crores of um, uh, revaluation come 18 crores in Q2. So there is that. Um, but however, even uh, if the repu were to remain uh, flat for the next uh, two quarters, I don't see an issue in maintaining or uh, beating these uh, margin numbers. Mm. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, good morning. Sorry, on growth, uh, did you put out a number? Uh, if you can, you said H2 will, I mean, it's tough to grow, understandable at that same pace, but where will you end it uh, in F523 on revenues? So we think um, middle teens should be possible. Uh, I think at the moment we are um, we have done um, in constant currency terms about four percent in Q1 and 4.6 in uh, Q2. Um, if I extrapolate that and uh, bake in a little bit of slowness, uh, then maybe 12 to 15 percent should be possible. Okay, uh, 12 to 15 percent growth you said for the full year. Yeah. Okay, that's for FY23. Uh, are you also taking into consideration how the situation is panning out in Europe? Because 20% of your revenues comes from there. It has not only been very challenging there, there's a massive energy crisis that has played out. Now there's winter as well that's coming through. So uh, this, 15 to, this 12 to 15% growth, you think it could be under check if things worsen in Europe? Um, well... Firstly, the, the guidance that we have given is uh, on constant currency. So hopefully, um, there's no exchange rate impact on uh, that. Uh, secondly, the client mix that we have uh, in Europe are a mix of uh, luxury goods who, uh, suppliers who have seen not much of uh, slowdown. And there is a little bit of we do work for industrial and uh, high tech where there is definitely a slowdown. So. All things considered, uh, even if we bake in the 20% of revenues that come from Europe, um, I think uh, mid-teen growth should be possible. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, the other point is, you know, you have constantly been paying out close to 70% of your profits. I think you have uh, uh, a stated guidance that you'll pay out 50% of uh, the profits you'll make. What's preventing you from uh, going ahead and upping this guidance? So um, I guess there are only two needs for us in terms of capital allocation. One is to either pay it back to investors in terms of dividends or buybacks. And the latter is our uh, preferred way of uh, returning cash. And the second is to um, use it for um, inorganic purposes. And if we don't have any 
inorganic uh, requirements near term, then we are happy to pay out that cash to um, sh uh, shareholders because we believe that they will have their opportunity costs are uh, far higher than ours. Um, and any return that we could make will be far lower than what um, our um, investors could get out of it. Mm. So that is one. And in the measurement period that um, uh, we took, which is the last five years, FI18 to FI22, uh, we had one acquisition. So I guess uh, it's about um, we, uh, so in that period, the cash return was 70%. But having said that, had there been more acquisitions, maybe the um, payout would have been lower. Therefore, we are guiding for about 50%. But in certain measurements period, it could be higher. In certain, it could be a little lower than that. Mm. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, you know, eClerks has emerged from a rough uh, sort of time, right? Even pre-COVID, growth rates were uh, half a percent, one percent uh, in that uh, range. Uh, and then COVID struck. Now things are improving. Do you think uh, the uh, sort of business model has hit a sweet spot? It's kind of stabilized. Uh, you just give us some uh, sort of uh, guidance in terms of how you think about it, because for the full year, you have already put a number, which is 12 to 15 percent top line growth. Uh, but uh, in terms of the business model and where things are headed from here, slightly longer out, uh, are you in the right place? So we believe we made the necessary investments in productizing our services and embedding um, analytics and technology in the work that we do, um, having a greater uh, percentage of um, folks who are onshore and closer to the clients. And therefore, we believe, and these are changes that came on the back of uh, the slow growth in the FI 16 to FI 19 period. Mm. And um, I think we believe that uh, these things have um, borne fruit, at least in the last two years. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, it will continue to work for us in the future. Okay, all the best. Thanks for uh, joining us, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, yes. and uh, have a profitable uh, second half of the year. Uh, Devin, if you listen in to that conversation, there's a 12 to 15